Hey, Riley. You got work this Wednesday or what? Long time no see, sister-in-law. What's up all of a sudden? Skip the pleasantries. Just give me an answer. Hold on a second. I'm not following you. Ugh, seriously? Just tell me. Are you working this Wednesday or not? Make up your mind. Um, well, I think I've got work. Um, oh well. Then you should take the day off. Huh? Um, sorry? What exactly do you mean? I mean it literally. Even if you say that, I'm still not sure what you're getting at. Could you explain it properly? Ugh, honestly, it's exhausting having a sister-in-law who doesn't get anything. All right, so on Wednesday, I'm supposed to go back to your parents' house where you live. Huh? Does that mean you're going back to your family home? Well, something like that. Anyway, on Wednesday, take the day off from work and get everything ready at home. Uh, I see. If that's the case, then I understand. Oh, and if Ben has work, tell him to take the day off work too. What? My husband too? Of course. My luggage is too much. And besides, a man's strength is essential for moving. Moving? Wait, does that mean you'll be living at our family home? Really? What are you talking about? You're really bad at understanding things, aren't you? No. I understand that it's also your house, so you have the right to go back. Ugh. Seriously? How stupid can you be? Seriously? I'm sorry if I offended you. I apologize. However, it was all so sudden. Why do I have to listen to you about how to go back to my own house? Yes, I understand that. However, you have your husband and two children, right? Yes, but what does that have to do with anything? By the way, you are aware that Ben and I are currently living with my parents, right? Huh? What are you talking about? Don't beat around the bush. Just say it clearly. Um, it's difficult to say. But if your family of four were to move in, it might become a bit cramped. What? Are you saying you and Ben are going to live with us? Yes. That's what we're thinking. Didn't you know that? Regardless of whether I knew or not, why did you and your husband just decide to move in without consulting me, your sister? I'm not sure what to say when you ask why. Why would mom and dad do this without saying a word to their daughter? I can't believe it. Even if you say that to me... Huh? You guys are just freeloaders, right? What? You and Ben have been relying on mom and dad's money to live, haven't you? No, that's not true. We absolutely haven't. I don't believe you. Anyway, the three of us are moving to that house next Wednesday. Wait, hold on a second. Well, the three of you? You guys are just parasites with nothing to do. So you should be ready to accept us. Please, wait a minute. What do you mean by the three of you? I mean, just me and the kids. So it's just you and the children? What about your husband? He's long gone. We got divorced last month. What? I didn't hear about that. When did that happen? Last month. Last month. What happened? It's hard to believe someone who seems so nice could get a divorce. That's none of your business, is it? Why do we have to talk about it? Well, there's no particular reason. But someone who seems so nice... That doesn't matter at all. I just wish you could understand that I'm going back to my parents' house. You're really dumb, you know that? I, I'm sorry. However, have you talked to your father and mother about the divorce? I messaged my mom earlier, and I also mentioned the move, so it should be fine. However, she hasn't read it yet. I think that's because your mother is currently at the hospital and hasn't had a chance to read it yet. What? What did you say? Your mother is currently at the hospital. 
At the hospital? What happened? Why is she there? I know you're upset about finding out about the hospitalization, but I also think it would have been better if we had told her about the divorce and the move earlier. What? Are you trying to lecture me in place of my mom? You've become quite the bossy wife. This isn't about me being a wife or not. I just think you should have informed her. More properly. Anyway, if I'm going to be back at my parents' house, I won't let you freeload off of us. Please stop being unreasonable. We are not parasitic. We're just living together because we have circumstances. I'm not interested in your words. And I don't feel like listening. Your excuse of being parasites is a joke. Hey, my sister. Anyway, tell Ben to take a break and clean our room. My sister, this conversation isn't over yet. Hi, Riley. It's me. About the move I mentioned before, is the cleaning and preparation going well? Thank you for finally responding, my sister. I was planning to explain things properly, but you never responded at all. Explain? What is there to explain? I already told you. I'm not interested in your excuses. Are you still intent on labeling us as parasites as a couple? Don't make me repeat myself. I'm not interested in your excuses and I have no intention of listening to them. I'm a nurse and I work night shifts. So make sure you can take care of the kids properly when I'm away. What? Hold on. Why am I? I know it makes mom happy to live with her grandkids, but she's not getting any younger, you know. So it's tough for her at night, which means it's your job as the childless daughter-in-law to take care of her. Even if you say that it's possible, I also work during the day. And besides, isn't the younger child still too small? That younger one is already one year old this year. You're going back to work even though the child is still young? I want to return to work soon, so we're moving tomorrow. I have a job too, and I just can't keep taking time off forever. Are you saying you're moving just so you can leave the child rearing to us while you go back to work? You were bragging about working during the day a minute ago, weren't you? So you're working a part-time job even though you call it work right? Taking care of one or two children shouldn't be a problem. I can understand the need to make a living. However, this attitude of not seeking anyone's consent or listening to the situation is too self-centered. What did you say? How dare you? As a wife? Don't speak so arrogantly, Riley. I'll return those exact words to you. You don't even know why we were living with our parent-in-laws. So please don't lecture us without understanding the situation. What? During the time you were away from home due to work and childcare, you have no idea how difficult it was for us, do you? What are you talking about? You've been acting all high and mighty since earlier. You're only living with us because you don't have a stable job. That's not true. My job is not just a part-time job. It's online sales. Online sales? It's a business where I receive orders online and deliver the ordered products by mail or home delivery. It may look like a part-time job from a nurse's perspective, but it's a regular job with a busy schedule and income. What's that? There's no way you're doing that. Whether you believe it or not, that's the fact. You think I'm a parasite, but I also have my own house, you know? What? You? A house? You mean you own a house? Yes. That's correct. However, due to the circumstances I mentioned earlier, we are temporarily living with our parent-in-laws. Hold on. What are you trying to say? I don't understand what you're getting at. Goodness gracious. I haven't talked about this either, but to move somewhere for an easier life without knowing anything, you're quite fortunate. What are you talking about? Stop being so pretentious and just tell me already. What is it that I don't know? Our father-in-law had a stroke three months ago and is now bedridden in the hospital. Huh? Dad is bedridden? What does that mean? It means exactly what it sounds like. Your father is currently bedridden in the hospital. The reason your mother called you instead of messaging is that it's not something you talk about over messages. 
They've been trying to contact you ever since your father fell ill. So it's been three months? Come to think of it, there were a lot of missed calls and voicemails around that time. And they were so annoying that I just ignored them. Was that... it? Well, I thought so. You're an ignorant child who never tried to confirm anything. Even though you had a feeling something like this was happening. What do you mean my ignorant child? I can't be helped. I didn't know anything about it. If I had known that my dad was in that condition, I would have rushed to his side too. It's not that you didn't know. It's that you didn't try to find out, right? Anyway, your mother tried to contact you multiple times, but you didn't even bother to reply. So your mother decided to cut ties with you. What? Cut ties? She said, even in a time like this, my daughter won't even reply. We don't need to inform that idiot daughter anymore. Not inform me? What are you saying? Your mother and other relatives were so disgusted by your behavior. Your behavior has gone too far. Too far? Are you saying that I've gone too far? What other words are there to describe your behavior? It's precisely because you were not aware of this that we gave up on contacting and persuading you. That's not true. It's like you're treating me like an intruder. I was going through a tough time with my divorce. That's why I didn't notice. And if that's the case, why didn't you try to convey even a few words to us? If you had, we might have been able to consider it. Well, I think that's true, but... It's too late for excuses now. Anyway, there's no one in the extended family who will help or take you in. Wait a minute. Going back to what I was saying after my father-in-law was hospitalized, I thought my mother-in-law was feeling anxious by herself, so... I moved in for a short period of time to help with care and household chores until my mother-in-law settled down. That's... that's a lie. That can't be true. And like I mentioned earlier, I have my own house, so I plan to return after everything settles down. I also plan to focus on starting a family next year. Wait a minute. It's difficult for me when you're only telling me this now. I already reserved movers for next week, you know? Ah, yes. You did mention that. However, why does that matter? So what? Is that supposed to mean something? What do you really want me to do when I've already hired a moving company and decided to move next week? You're really exasperating. Are you throwing a fit? Are you trying to run away because you found out about your parents' situation and it's too much trouble? What do you mean, run away? Don't use such negative language. However, it's not like there's anything we can do about the situation, is there? It's really impossible. I don't want to hear your selfish excuses. Is there really nothing we can do about it? It seems like you were thinking of letting me and your mother take care of your children. However, in reality, it's you who have to take care of your children and your father. Even if you say that, what am I supposed to do? I'm a nurse and I have night shifts, so I'm really busy. I can't take care of my father. You're such an unfeeling and heartless person. Since he is your real father, you should be the one taking care of him, right? However, even if you say that... Well, even if you keep complaining, I'll eventually leave. Of course, I'll be leaving with Ben. What? Well then, that's how it is. Excuse me. Wait, Riley, this conversation isn't over yet. Riley! Hey, Riley, please respond! I know you're reading the messages. Riley, hey! Answer me, Riley! You're persistent, huh? Getting nearly 100 messages since early morning. Don't tell me you changed your phone model. Finally, you replied. Yes, that's right, I changed my phone model. It's all thanks to you for kindly blocking my messages. Oh, well done on the phone change. By the way, today is the day of the move, right? It's already around noon. So have you moved into the new place yet? How can you ask me that after what you just said? If I keep getting calls from the moving company asking for an update, 
it's really stressful, you know? If it's that stressful, does it mean you haven't even notified them about the cancellation? That's not good. The moving company doesn't belong to just you, my sister. I know that too, you know. Anyway, explain about what happened the other day. When you said the other day, what were you referring to? You said the other day that you and Ben were leaving our place together. Why did you, as a couple, decide to leave our house? I meant it exactly as I said it. Besides, we finished preparing yesterday and left this morning. What? We left so as not to be a hindrance before you and your children move in. It's good, isn't it? That the troublesome parasite is gone? Wait a minute. They already left? Is that true? Yes, it's true. I won't explain again. So don't ask. Why did you leave? Without my permission? Why would we need your permission? We should be happy that the troublesome parasite is gone, shouldn't you? That's, well, I did say. But the situation was different then and now, right? I can't believe you, who's not working, can't support my mom. The excuse of not knowing won't work this time. It's just that you didn't choose to know until now. Ugh. Anyway, it's already been decided and done that Ben and I are leaving. You should stop throwing a tantrum and go quietly home. We don't know what will happen if you cause any more trouble for the moving company. Wait a minute. Riley? What will happen if you're not there? What are you going to do about taking care of my child when you leave? I don't know about that. I'm not a babysitter. Besides, I have no obligation to take care of your child. So please think about it yourself. Please, can you wait, please? Riley, calm down. We're family, right? What's with the sudden change of heart? Can you please stop saying things like that? It's creepy. I'm not trying to get close to you. I really mean what I'm saying from the bottom of my heart. Yes, I just changed my mind. I apologize for what happened before. So please. Didn't I just tell you earlier? It's too late for that. And even if you say you change your mind, it's just a temporary measure, isn't it? No, I mean it. I apologize for what happened before and I won't be mean to you again. Besides, although there may be a misunderstanding now as we live together, We'll surely learn to get along well. So please don't leave. Please? I'm sorry, but I don't feel that way at all. Living with someone like you is impossible for me. Please take care of your children and parents. Hey, wait. Please, I'm begging you. However, we're family, right? I'm really serious about this. I'll change my ways and I'll do my best to serve you. Let's help each other, okay? You're being persistent, aren't you? Can you please stop it already? Seriously. Besides, I wish I had heard those words from you earlier. If so, maybe I could have managed to get along with you as a family member by marriage. It's not too late to do that now. Let's be family members by marriage from now on. So please, Riley, help me. I'll do what I can too. I intended to do everything I could for you in the future, as they have treated me well. And up until now, I've always done everything I could. That's right. And you'll continue to do everything you can from now on. However, you destroyed that goodwill yourself. Huh? The goodwill of doing everything I could. Being called a parasite and made fun of by my own sister is unbearable. That's why you've ruined it for yourself. No. That's because I didn't know the whole story. I didn't mean to. I'm getting tired of having this conversation with you. Can we stop now? I don't want you to send me any more messages. Wait, please wait. You're asking me to take care of our parents in this situation? You should already know without me having to say it, shouldn't you? Don't be stupid. It's obviously impossible. I promise, I'll be nice to you for life. So please, help me. Don't make me repeat it again and again. Since you destroyed that goodwill, I have no intention of going back. And especially since you have decided to leave, please handle things properly. What? 
If I act more submissive, don't mess with me. Are you going to abandon your family? And you're still a wife? Are you angry now? Even in this situation, you still have such a great composure to struggle against me. What are you talking about? Sister-in-law. No, Clara. Haven't you realized that you've abandoned your family up until now? What? If you have the time and the luxury to say such pompous things, why don't you face your family? Or rather your parents whom you have just abandoned up until now. Even if you say that, I just... I'm tired of hearing such words and excuses. And besides, why don't you stop it already? It's embarrassing. What did you say? Did you call me embarrassing? Did you really say that? Yes, you are embarrassing. To put it more bluntly, it's uncool and shameful. A grown woman in her late 30s throwing a tantrum like a child with someone 10 years her junior? That's what it is. What? You keep making excuses and blaming others, not even taking responsibility for your own actions. You always choose what benefits you and run away towards an easy way out. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and felt ashamed of what you're doing? Shut up. Who are you to lecture me like that? As if you're my superior? Just because you're my sister-in-law. I'm just doing what I believe is right and living my life as I please. I see. Well, then, from now on, I'll make sure to do what I believe is right as well. It seems pointless to continue talking with you any further. So I'll be leaving now. Hey, wait a minute. I'll be blocking all your emails and calls from now on. Please don't try to contact me or rely on me anymore. Hold on. Hey! Well then, Mrs. Clara. Thank you for everything up until now. Please take care of yourself. Always. Riley! Hey, Riley? Are you seriously going to ignore me again by leaving my messages on red? Hey, don't ignore me. Reply to me. Ah, let me guess. It's you again. So you contacted me again. Does that mean you changed your phone number again? I can't believe you still have the time to do that. Even in this situation. I can't do it anymore, obviously. Right now, I'm contacting you through my mother's smartphone. Ah. I thought it was my mother from the way you wrote, but the message doesn't sound like her at all. If you do something like that, it will only make your situation worse, you know? However, you're the one who created a situation where my position became worse, aren't you? Oh, you mean to say that I created it? Don't try to play dumb. You told everyone about me to my mom, didn't you? Yesterday, when I reluctantly packed my things and brought my kids back to my house, I was scolded by my mom in order to take care of myself and my dad. Ah, I see that's what happened. And I didn't create the situation. I just told my mother what happened honestly. When I told her that I was leaving, she cried and begged me to stay, you know. Huh? Well, my mother understood how hard Ben and I have been working until now. She was the one who stayed with me and supported me when I was having a hard time which is why she asked me not to leave. She also said she would scold you properly and make you take responsibility and reflect on your actions. What? What? However, I can't work with a selfish person like you anymore, so I asked to leave the house, promising to provide minimal support if there's anything you absolutely need in the future. Of course, the support will be provided by my mother alone. Hey, you, what about me? You're not going to help me? Of course, my mother understood us. Unlike you, Clara, that's why I feel sorry for her. But I left the family house by making that promise. If you feel sorry, then don't leave the house, right? Acting like you're loved by my mom as a daughter-in-law, then betraying her? Have you properly read the messages I sent yesterday and earlier? It's you who has been betraying my mother and father. What? It's a waste of time to explain the same thing to you over and over again, Clara. If you really don't understand, try putting your hand on your chest and listen. Listen to my chest? What do you mean by that phrasing? I don't have the intention to explain. As I said before, 
it's just a waste of time to talk to you. Also, the reason why you were scolded by our mother was not just because of me, right? Huh? Clara, you were cheating with the host too. What? Why are you bringing that up? After you contacted me a week ago, before the move, I did some investigating. I was curious as to why you were trying to move into our house so aggressively. And then I found out immediately that you were cheating with the host and got caught, leading to your husband divorcing you. Wait. And then when it looks like you were going to be sued for alimony, you panicked and fled to the host place with your child. However, the host abandoned you too, saying that when the money runs out, so does the relationship and leaves you with no options. That's when you came up with the idea of returning to your family's home. That's right, isn't it? Y yeah yeah something like that. That's why before leaving, I also mentioned your affair as a reason to my mother. She cried even more and got angrier. She said, I can't believe my daughter was so foolish and careless. What are you talking about? If you do something like that, I'll have even less freedom. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't know anymore. I think it's best to stop resisting and pay for your own sins by returning home. If you keep acting up, I don't know what my mother will do. Wait a minute. Well, then I have to go back to work now. Wait. Excuse me this time. Wait, Riley! So here's the deal. It turns out that Clara was going on a spending spree with her credit card, buying all these fancy high-end items just before her affair blew up in her face. And get this, she had the audacity to plan on making her husband foot the bill for it all later on. Can you believe it? I was absolutely flabbergasted and didn't even know how to react to that kind of behavior. But here's where things really hit the fan. When her affair finally came to light and her husband dropped the D word, divorce, if you didn't catch that, she had the nerve to ask him if he would at least cover the cost of those pricey items she had splurged on. Can you imagine? Of course, he flat out refused and basically told her to clean up her own mess. And let me tell you, she was left in quite the pickle. With everything falling apart, Clara found herself unable to return to work. Instead, she had to focus all her energy on taking care of her kids and her father. Talk about a full plate! And to make matters worse, she had to take on a part-time job just to make ends meet during the little free time that she had. It's safe to say she was beyond disappointed. I mean, the money she can make from that gig is peanuts compared to what she used to earn, and those payments and repayments she's stuck with are going to take her ages to clear. Now, let's shift gears for a moment and talk about my life. It's a whole different story, let me tell you. I'm actually pregnant with my first child, and Ben and I are living this peaceful, blissful life together. It's like a dream come true. And guess what? Our dear mother has been making appearances at our humble abode every now and then, now that things have settled down a bit. We've managed to maintain a great relationship with her, and we even shared the news about our impending bundle of joy. Life couldn't be any better, my friend. 